Ground Zero Salem. It's Pat. Uh, I woke up maybe 45 minutes ago. It's the afternoon. For those of you not in the know, I work overnights the first half of the week. And for some godforsaken reason, I got out of bed a little bit earlier than usual. And I said to myself, self, it's time to film a really, really long collection update. I'm not sure what possessed me to do this or if I'm going to finish this. I'm going to have to hop in the shower shortly and get on with my day. But I got the itch. So I'm going to talk about a bunch of stuff I've gotten in the past three or four months. All the stuff that I've purchased outside of that New York hardcore, metallic hardcore obsession that I did a bunch of recent updates on. Just uh, review some purchases with you. A lot of metal, some hardcore still. Tapes, CDs, cassettes, VCLT, stuff I ordered, stuff I picked up in the wild at residency. Let's rip it. Let's get into it. Uh, right now. So, ordered some tapes from the Von Frost distro. Um, I try, try to keep an eye on their doings in social media because they seem to exclusively distro this cryptic fan music label, this cassette label that puts out a lot of cool bootlegs with pro J card covers of a lot of material I like. Lots of misfits, uh, random sessions and out of print LPs, demo collections, what have you. A batch went up and I, uh, I pulled the trigger on four cassettes. First one, most of these have seen release in one way or another, but it, the presentation on these in particular and the price point was worth it for me. So I, I jumped at it, leapt at it. First up, the Tormentor Destruction demo split cassette. Uh, Tormentor being the pre-creator band, not the Hungarian one, and Destruction. Early embryonic stages of Teutonic thrash, messy, feral, fucking possessed stuff. All five of these songs by Tormentor ended up on Pleasure to Kill. Then you've got a bunch of stuff by Destruction that ended up on their early material as well, such as Mad Butcher, Total Disaster, Front Beast, all that stuff. Recording sounds like a demo, of course, because it's demos. The dubbing, though, sounds pretty clear. There's not a lot of noise and definitely worthwhile material. If you like that sort of thing, I think Eric had a version of this a while ago. He did a bootlegs update a while back. Next up is the Venthory, Venom Bathory split. Classic material from Venom and Bathory, respectively. A lot of early, early stuff. Um, the Bathory stuff on here is some of my favorite material. I have different versions or maybe the same versions, I don't remember, on the uh, Jubileum comps. It's nice to have it all kind of right in one place, though. My favorite track being Burning Leather, when they're still kind of exercising their Venom and Motorhead kind of demons. Um, depending on my mood, that's my favorite era of Bathory stuff when they just sound like a really evil fucking Motorhead Venom clone. But at any rate, same deal. J card's very nice. Dubbing is good. Sounds pro. Just a clear cassette. Clear shell. And then Hellhammer. Apocalyptic Raids. This needs no introduction or explanation. I have it on LP. Uh, my LP copy of it is beat to shit. It's playable. doesn't have a skip on it, but it's very noisy. And uh, if you've noticed in the background, depending on my angle or where I'm shooting from down here, I have the LP hanging on my wall. So this is just kind of a listening copy I thought I'd pick up. But, you know, pre-Celtic Frost, of course. Early death metal. Early black metal. Mandatory shit. And related, we have the Celtic Frost demos, 84 and 85. There's uh, two demos from 84, a demo from 85, and some live tracks from 86. The live tracks are bordering on unlistenable, unfortunately, but the demo songs sound awesome. Cool to hear slightly different versions, different variations. There's some instrumental versions of stuff on here. Uh, there's a few Hellhammer songs that they're still performing on here as well. Messiah. So very fucking great. You know, if you're a Frost fan, it's worth it to track this stuff down, even if it's just digitally. There's lots of different versions of these bootlegs floating around out there from different sources, but it was nice to pull the trigger on all of them simultaneously. Price point was decent. So 
happy to have those in the collection. Uh, made an order from Bindrune recently. Thought I'd catch up with some Bindrune releases. And um, I'll talk about them momentarily. But while we're still on the topic of cassettes, Marty sent me a copy of the new Glorious Dead demo cassette. It's a rehearsal demo. Very nice smoky shell there. Got a cool J card. And it's raw, uncompromising, feral, classic sounding death metal packed with great riffs, great catchiness. It's recorded live on a Tascam and sounds fucking amazing. I, I feel like maybe a lot of metal, especially nowadays, a lot of music in general really is lacking that spontaneity of just having everything on tape and just playing it. Um, these guys know what they're doing because it's not like there's any kind of fuck ups on it, but it's got that sort of frenetic live quality to it that makes it just makes it for me. Um, I've been kind of burnt out on OSDM for lack of a better term lately. I feel like I've heard everything I need to hear for the moment. There's a, just a glut of this shit that's come out in the past 10 years. I'm sure I'll get over it shortly. Um, actually, I think I have already started to, I, I heard that outer heaven and I was like, oh yeah, I should probably pick that up. The scorched LP, etc. Anyway, this is a cut above most bands, in my opinion, and I'm not being hyperbolic. I really recommend people check this out. Filthy, northern, ancient death metal. They're going to be dropping a 7-inch soon. And they're also going to be doing an LP, I think, next year. So keep your eye out for them. Your boy, Marty Ritkonen from Bind Rune Recordings. Next up, Tomb Mold. Cerulean Salvation picked this up at their live gig in Worcester, Mass. about a month ago. Went out there with my buddy Peter, who was a guest on the channel a little while ago. Maybe about a year ago now, actually. Time flies. Um, Two Mold really kicked out the jams live. They were fantastic. Horrendous was really good, too. My first time at Ralph's Rock Diner in Worcester. Great venue. Very weird. Um, cool place. It's like a bunch of warehouses tacked onto a diner at any rate this is probably the best two mold material right now in my opinion these two songs just got two jams on here and they're both killer uh planetary clairvoyance and cerulean salvation they're going for a little bit more of a cosmic you know kind of spacey thing thematically it's a little bit more meandering and technical musically but it's still just as violent and scary and and fucking pissed as their previous material they put out one of the best death metal records this year and they're stepping up their game with this so if you can find it i think it's already sold out um pick it up if you can find it definitely listen to it i know it's up on Bandcamp. if i can find a link i will drop it for you next up i have three cassettes from life eternal productions which is a cassette based label out of germany that is brand spanking new my buddy Thomas runs it. Um, I've done tape trades with him in the past. He hit me up via email a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago maybe. Uh, he's like, yo, I started up this new tape label. You want to check out some of my stuff? And I was like, absolutely. Support your friends. I was like, yeah, I, I can't do with tape trades right now because I just don't have the time. But I'd be happy to support what you're doing. So picked up three cassettes. This is uh, Radiation, The Gift of Doom. It's a full length on cassette. It's a thrash band from Slovakia. Newer band. It's a J card for you. And this is, you know, kind of very feral, ferocious, kind of blackish leaning thrash. You could make comparisons to some early German counterparts, as you can imagine. There's certain there's a certain kind of volcanic South American feel to it as well, I, I think. And it's very, very fucking good. Um, I will drop a link for the label down below if you want to explore. I've got a Horda cassette as well. This is a Chilean band, black metal band. It definitely has a kind of first wave-ish South American vibe to it. Very sloppy on the first demo. It's a demo collection. It's a 2009 demo and a rehearsal track on the first side. And then two more demos on the second side. And as you can... Notice from their progress from 2009 to 2014, all captured on here. They're starting to tighten things up and get a little bit more melodic, but it's all still that super raw kind of 
South American black metal stuff. If you like the proselytism bands, um, if you like communion, shit like that, I recommend you check that out. And then we have a split from Horta and Deadly Scythe. Which I haven't spun yet. Uh, Deadly Scythe, from what I gathered, is also kind of like evil thrash kind of shit. Haven't listened to it though, so I might have to come back and correct that. And this actually, it was put out by Life Eternal and Proselytism from Chile, which is a, just a fantastic fucking label. All right. So those are the cassettes. And I got some CDs. Got the new Dodsrit. This is a Swedish band. Put out a great cassette EP last year that I loved. Gushed about. It's a combination of um, kind of traditional second wave-ish kind of black metal on the raw side with kind of this melodic, fast crust a la Tragedy from Ashes Rise. Bands like that. He, they do a great job. I think it might be a one-man project. Don't quote me on that. But Dodsrit does a great job expanding that sound on this. This is the debut on Prosthetic, entitled Spirit Crusher. A lot of the ideas are fleshed out. The epic songs are pretty epic and long, but I don't find myself getting bored with it. Um, it's got that great sort of charging, almost sort of D-beat, rhythmically speaking, quality to it. Check that out. If you're a punker and like black metal. Also, Bathory. This is the Yellow Goat bootleg that's seen the rounds past couple of years. CD version. Best sounding version of this for your money. I picked it up from Nuclear War Now. I was buying, buying a hoodie and I saw it in the distro and I was like, oh yeah, this sold out last time. I need this. If you've ever done a, a taste test, like a side-by-side -side listening kind of deal with the remixed version, the white goat cover or whatever from 2003 and this recording, it really is like night and day. There are certain records where, you know, the remixes or different versions don't really matter. This certainly does. This and the return, I feel. So, you know, at least if you're a Bathory fan, you like that early stuff, you like that really dirty, you know, motorheadish Bathory material um, from this and the demos, do yourself a favor and at least download it or stream it and make the comparison for yourself because this is not like night and day with that remix version that came out that boss and Corthon friggin slaughtered so those uh bind runes bind rune stuffs i have here got the nakachwin ancient pulse compilation most of this is acoustic and it's very very soothing uh must be in my cd player at the moment nakachwin Western Virginia, I feel like, is where they're from. Uh, they don't even really get heavy till about halfway through this. I know it's a just a compilation of sorts. I love this brand of melodic black metal stuff, nature-oriented black metal stuff. I find it very, very calming. Nice booklet in there. Uh, there's a cover of Over the Mountain by Ozzy, which is it's an interesting cover. It's well done. Heart of Akamon is a great full length. It's nice to hear the material outside of that. And this puts it together pretty well. We have the new inference, Bleakness of Our Constant. I have another CD of theirs kicking around somewhere. I bought a little while ago. This is wonderful, kind of doomy, melodic, nature vibe, black metal shit. Um, I just dig it. I've listened to it a whole bunch of times since I got this, which wasn't that long ago. It's soothing. There, you get the the harsh vocals, kind of death metal vocals interspersed in there. There's a lot of clean vocals. There's a good melodic metal kind of vent to it. Fun, fun listen. Also, pretty transcendent listen. Binder in this year. Panfaga. Yord. Also, along with everything else this band has done, in my opinion, just great. Swedish melodic black metal shit. Um, their album from last year was fantastic. Dromskapar. This, it's kind of interesting because this has this uh, kind of Twilight, 
kind of reddish sunset thing going on with it aesthetically as far as the album art goes. And there's a different direction slightly in their music. It's it's that mid-paced, melodic, you know, catchy kind of black metal stuff, atmospheric black metal stuff. But this has a distinctly different vibe than Drums Kapar. Drums Kapar has all that um, crashing waves and stuff and sort of creating atmosphere. This has just almost like an autumnal kind of thing going on, which I dig quite a bit. I love it. Got a few things from Eli. This is a band called Omen Filth. Where are they from? Philippines. Omen Filth is from the Philippines. And it's it's dirty, somewhat loose, black and thrash stuff. And I like it a lot. Uh, the last track is just like a really long, noisy, ambient track, which I, I could really do without personally but the the first four songs are fucking awesome kind of niflheimish sort of thrashy songs or morbid insulter that kind of shit philippines representing he also sent me the storm before the calm by decapitator shamefully i've not housed this in a jewel case yet because i don't have any um we will destroy you will obey was a record that came out at a time where there wasn't really a lot of thrash metal and I was really hyped on it for good reason just because I hadn't heard anything new from that genre in quite a while this is pre-municipal waste and all that stuff coming out my friend Mike burned it for me probably right after burning technology had come into the fold we're talking like late 90s and it was a great record I listened to it into the ground I feel like this one's even better a little bit more cleaned up a um, little bit more produced came out years and years later and if i'm not mistaken matt harvey from exhumed is involved in this project but it's great it's uh just nice nice and catchy you can tell you can tell also there's a bunch of newer thrash metal bands that are dudes that come from the hardcore scene um i don't need to name names and you can tell that they listen to a lot of stuff like i've been talking about recently up to this update leeway you know um killing time stuff like that because it sounds almost like those bands put back through like a German or even Bay Area style thrash metal wood chipper. You know, there's just a certain significance put on the breakdowns in the breakdowns of those bands. And Decapitator has a similar sound, but it's more straightforward. You know, there's less, um, there's less kind of pit pandering kind of shit with it. Not a diss on the, the aforementioned sound. But Decapitator's really pure in that way, where they're just going straight for the throat, looking to throttle you. And I love it. Next up, Edgewise from Lancaster, PA. Um, so this arrived a little bit too late to make it into my last update. This is a heavy, metallic, hardcore band from Pennsylvania that I used to see all the time as a kid. I have their second LP on vinyl, kicking around. Cheap discography CD. Um, unfortunately, it's one of those discography CDs that doesn't say what any of the tracks are from. So it's got their second LP. It's got their debut LP, Slaughter of the Innocents on it, and I think some 7-inch stuff. This band was great, great stuff. They were a lot different from a lot of the other bands that I used to see at the time. Yeah, they're metallic hardcore, but there was a good dose of speed injected. There was still the velocity of um, 80s hardcore in it. And there's a, some interesting lead work, um, dual guitar stuff going on with it. it you know, they could play the, the shit out of their instruments. Um, hard vocals. Real brutal. Real, real brutal band. They recently got back together and put out a 7-inch. I haven't heard it. But, yeah, um, they do SOA... Uh, State of Alert, which is Henry Rollins' first band. They do a cover of one of his songs, Lost in Space. Great, great jam. I recommend Edgewise if you like the New York hardcore sound. If def Definitely if you like Killing Time and shit like that. Next up, a um, few random pickups out in the wild. I picked up two of the later Typo Negative records. I got Dead Again. Five bucks, Residency Records. And I picked up Typo Negative's Life is Killing Me. At Newberry Comics. Um, I really like these. They, it seems like almost a sort of return to form after World Coming Down, which was a, a really long, dark, depressing record with no humor in it. And this one, there's a, on these two rather, there's a lot of, a 
a little bit more upbeat stuff going on. It's a little bit more tongue in cheek, dark humor. Um, the Dead Again is the only one that didn't come out on Roadrunner. It came out on SPV. Um, the only thing is, jams like Halloween and Heaven, great like head nodding, kind of upbeat, um, dark, funny kind of shit. Only thing is, I don't. It'll probably grow on me over the years. I don't know. Maybe it never will. I don't really like the heavily Beatles aping type of negative material, like songs like Tripping a Blind Man and shit like that. It's just not. It's just not my thing. But I wanted to own these. I remember when they came out. I remember them playing a lot of these songs the last time I ever saw a typo negative, which was at the Worcester Palladium in Worcester, Mass., which was, I think, 2007, right before Peter Steele passed. So it's good to have those. I'm kind of going back now, you know. Um, I hear great things about World Coming Down. I never got into that record. I was always the first two kind of guy. I, I'm the first two album kind of guy with a lot of stuff. Um, so I'm looking forward to kind of exploring the catalog as time goes on. I know World Coming Down will, will probably click with me or be for me soon. Just got to get that fucking bummed out. Next up, got a little Sick of It All collection, none of which I've listened to yet. <laughs> Just thought I'd pull the trigger on. It was cheap on Amazon. It's uh, their later material from the 2000s. It's got little slip cases here. Death to Tyrants. Based on a true story. And then one of those re-recording deals called Nonstop, where they re-record a lot of stuff from like the first three records, first four records. Um, you know, I've always been kind of hesitant to get into that kind of shit where bands record their early material. You know, usually it's like for legal reasons so that they can re-release it. I don't think that's the case with this. I from judging from interviews that I've listened to with Lou. He really doesn't like the sound of some of those early records. And I've actually spun that stuff digitally, the um, the re-recorded stuff, and I, I actually it sounds really good. I don't think I prefer it to those original recordings, but I, I do enjoy it. I do like it, which isn't the case most of the time. You know, still suicidal after all these years. Ugh. But um, these other ones, I know a lot of these songs just because, I'm as I mentioned before, I like uh, I like their music videos. The music video for "Take the Night Off" is pretty great. Um, I these were Century Media recordings, these two, and they got a lot heavier on these. It seems like they leaned a little bit more on the harder or even slightly metallic kind of vibe rather than the kind of street punk oi kind of thing. Although I'm, I think there's plenty of stuff that involves that as well on these, but I really need to sit down and give them a full li listen before I can say one or the other. And we'll get into more of their material in just a moment when I get into records. All right, now, LPs. Going to whip through these because i got to get to work soon. Um, City Hunter. Deep Blood. So a lot of people have been talking about this. It's popped up on a lot of videos lately, or at least several. Youth Attack Records. Very boutique label. They put out a lot of noisy hardcore stuff and some black metal stuff. A little damage in the packaging there. Not going to complain about it. Um, deserved hype on this. Noisy, kind of 80s style hardcore with about as inhuman as you can get vocals without being stereotypical extreme metal vocals. A little bit of effect and echo and reverb. Um, sound monstrous. It sounds like the guy on the cover is singing. Some cool horror interludes. I know this is going to be an album of the year for probably a lot of people for good reason. It's all very well written. All the songs are short, as you can imagine. And I need to dig into it more. Haven't spun it physically yet. Listened to it digitally a couple of times. Definitely uh, up my alley, so to speak. I got this uh, Stillborn compilation. This is like a third or fourth tier 80s hardcore band from New York. Didn't make it into my updates because I was mostly talking about CDs. Um, kind of disappointing, not because of the music. The music is competent, workmanlike, New York hardcore. The first couple of demos on this, this is a demos compilation. The last demo tracks on this are really good. They get a little bit more bounce and a little bit more aggro, a little bit more moshy. Most of it's just kind of fast New York hardcore stuff. But the source recording on the first two demos sounds like the tape is warped or something. There's like wow and flutter on it 
which I, I could do without. It's not, it doesn't make it unlistenable, but it is very distracting. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that or if the CD sounds any different or if it's, like I said, it's just the source material. But it sounds like the tape that they got the tracks from is fucked up, which is a bummer. This is punkrecords.com put this out in 2009. Stillborn, they're kind of like an, you know, an also ran, but even the also rans of New York hardcore are fucking great, you know, along with like New York hoods and our gang and stuff like that. Um, had this on LP, flipped it regrettably a long time ago, repurchased it. Very happy about that. It's Hyrax. And yeah, I put it in a new sleeve and moved over the hype sticker because I'm that kind of fucking nerd. Hate, Fear, and Power came out late 80s, 86 on Metal Blade. One thing that's fun about this Hyrax record is it's so short and quick and to the point. It's definitely got the crossover spirit, but, you know, if you know Hyrax, it's definitely straight up molten metal falsetto vocals, courtesy, courtesy of Kate and Patena. Um, yeah, it's, it's a neck snapper all the way. Awesome shit. Second LP. First LP is mandatory. Second LP is almost as mandatory. Put it that way. Hyrex! Alright. Next up, one of the best hardcore records of the year. I've been listening to this constantly lately. I didn't have the foresight to remove it from its sealed sleeve. This is Mind Forces Excalibur. This shit fucking rules. Um, this came out on Triple B Records, who have been putting out great hardcore record after great hardcore record for the past couple of years. I think at this point, Triple B's been around for near a decade. I think the first thing they did was the first Step Forward demo. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so yeah, it's a Massachusetts label. They put out a ton of good stuff. This is a hardcore band from the Hudson Valley. Um, they borrow tastefully from a lot of late 80s New York stuff, the type of stuff I've been really into lately. Not directly sounding like anybody, but they have a good amount of the first couple of Leeway records on there. Some of the shredding, fast stuff on here um, in between the sort of jump the fuck up kind of riffing kind of almost sounds like Crumb Suckers, Prong. Um, they know they're, they've done their homework with their metal influence, but they seamlessly really fucking mix it into like some hard ass New York shit. If you like burn the slower parts almost kind of, kind of remind me of burn a little bit. They wear their influences on their sleeves. Well, but the concoction that they come up with is something new and special. And I haven't seen them live in person. Jason hook just saw him, I guess at the America's hardcore fest here. I've watched a ton of their live videos, which is something I don't do often like watching concerts on concerts, watching shows on YouTube and they have so much energy and are so good. Um, yeah, I can't gush about these guys enough. They're from Poughkeepsie. You know, the same stomping grounds as All Out War. Hardcore of another stripe up next from Reason of Insanity. This band was from Louisiana. Uh, lots of songs on this. Very, very fast hardcore punk. This band was really underrated. I never even heard about them when they were around. I learned of them from the Bob Surin book. And uh, just kind of bought this because I recognized the name after reading that book and pulled the trigger on it on some Discogs order. It was like $5 LP. And this shit rips. Um, lots of covers on it, including Face Down in the Dirt by The Offenders. They cover the punk Treblinka, who are great. I think they're finished but yeah we're talking you know 15 songs on one side kind of stuff american and early 80s scandinavian hardcore influenced i'd say really 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 good shit next up amen paranamia this came out on spine farm back when spine farm put out punk records in the late 80s or early 90s um not sure what exact year this came out Judging by how these dudes look and Doom shirt and all that, it's probably sometime in the early to mid-90s. Uh, Finnish band, cool, disrupt, slash extreme noise terror, dual vocal kind of crust shit. You can see there's two singers. 
big dog, little dog style. Um, one thing that kind of sets it apart a little bit is um, a couple of songs on here have that sort of almost R&B, like Chuck B, Chuck B, Chuck Berry style riffing on it, which is a cool thing to hear mixed in with like vicious, you know, feral crust stuff. But yeah, I just liked the cover, looked at the back, saw the members and pulled the trigger on that. Picked it up at Residency. This is one that's kind of funny. I've been wanting these Metallica singles EPs on vinyl for so long. I've wanted Creeping Death. I've wanted Jump in the Fire and I've wanted Whiplash. I saw this on Discogs. Hey, it's both on one. Save money. So that's that's a fun thing. Uh, you can't go wrong with that iconic demon. I love that guy. He's my best friend. So it's cool to have both of these on one record. This is all my favorite Metallica material. I have this stuff on cassette. I've been needing it on wax forever. Also have the Whiplash LP. I picked this up at Residency as well. The special neck brace remix of Whiplash does not sound any different to me. Um, and then there's live songs on this, or is it this? One of these has live tracks, quote unquote live tracks, that do not really sound live. I think they're live in the studio. I'm sure plenty of people know where that was recorded or what session it was, but I kind of almost prefer those versions. Or at least after wearing out the grooves on Kill 'Em All, it's kind of nice to hear something a little bit different. More hardcore, more punk hardcore kind of stuff here. Spasm 151. This band was around in the very late 90s, very very early 2000s. Austin band. Um, severely fucking underrated, thrashy, hardcore punk here. Kind of got some strong Poison Idea vibes, I feel. Um, the singer slash bassist James, so madman. Kind of a... Not notorious, because he's, you know, pretty nice dude, but well-known figure in Texas punk and uh, this is just a non-stop ripper I mean this is one of those over in less than 20 minutes LPs and one of the better things that came out from for this particular scene in the early 2000s and really deserves more praise um, Newberry Comics went in there this is a record store day pressing of Ina Kleina knocked music from Venom I had this back in the day. I actually own this on all three formats now. That's how much I enjoy this record. Uh, I saw it. it was a record store day pressing for 2017. Came out. It was a lot of money. It was too rich for my blood for a long time. And I just went in there and every time I went in, the price was lower and lower. Finally, it was like 12 bucks, And I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Um, you know, it's a great live record. It's very long. It has all the stuff from the debut up to uh, possessed material on it. This weird splatter. It's actually a picture disc. Just might bum some people out, but I don't care. It's Venom, you know, whatever. If there's sur surface noise, it makes it better. Yeah, all, all the stuff represented sounds good. There's guitar solos, like solo, solo, guitar solos drum solo like I don't need that shit on there but it's easily skippable and I mean what the fuck man you can keep your frostbitten kingdoms I'm gonna take top hats and cigars and fucking katanas fucking <laughs> hilarious wonderful wonderful shit and um also picked up I've seen this on the cheap everywhere for a while now it's the repressive uh domination on giant records um by morbid angel no fancy colors, it's black vinyl. Uh, I hated this record when it came out. It was one of the things where I was getting, at the time, a lot of, a couple of death metal records came out were really disappointing to me. I wouldn't say that they pushed me away from the genre or anything when I was a fickle teenager, but I was getting into other music and a few things didn't help me at the time, like keep me interested. I remember just being disappointed listening to this. It's, you know, it's slower. It's a little less vicious, I feel, than Covenant. Yada, yada, yada. That's how I felt at the time, anyway. Um, going back and revisiting it, it's quite good. I, I don't know exactly what I was thinking at the time. It's the last one with David Vincent. 
there is a little bit more down tempo stuff. His vocals are a little less monstrous and demonic. They're a little more, more like a hoarse shout, but it still sounds great. And there's there's some good stuff. And the, like the you know the sort of interludey shit on it is good as well. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. It's a good record. I'm glad to have it. I, I see it everywhere for like fifteen bucks which is like half the price of most death metal records and reissues now. So, Also got a, this uh, repress of Marauders. Five Deadly Venoms, their second LP. This was released on Demon's Run Amok. Marauder being this almost like a late 90s version of Crossover. Band from New York. Very hard New York stuff that had a significant death and thrash metal influence. A lot of mid pace kind of bolt thrower esque pummeling with uh, New York street swagger surrounding it. Um, the first album, Master Killer, is fucking mandatory. And I knew that this one's really good. This involves a lot more like kind of dramatic sort of flourishes with acoustic stuff and some clean vocals here and there. Um, oh, here and there, some of it almost leans more towards like kind of traditional hardcore. But it's a ferocious record and, and very fucking good. That's great. A couple of sick of it all LPs to wrap up. Um, first off, this was actually the last one I think I gave a listen to fully. Came out quite a while ago, 2003. Life on the Ropes, which came out on Fat Records. Um, fucking awesome. I mean, if you think about the context in which this came out, just a few years past 9-11, these guys are New Yorkers. You know, uh, first term Bush presidency, you know, not to get political here. Great cover art, you know, these scared little kids and religion and lies and greed and all that. Monsters kind of got them cornered in an alley. Um, the music is, is, it's sick of it all. You know, it's got the 80s hardcore, punk, heavier elements. But there's a certain, at least in the recording aspect of it, there's a certain grimier, meaner um slightly noisy heavy thing going on kind of hard to describe you know they have a certain discordant kind of riffing that you know it's almost weirdly noise rock to me um as well as plenty of anthemic stuff i feel like they tuned lower on this or something it's a great it's a cool listen it's a good record uh, if you like sick of it all which i do a lot obviously if you if you haven't noticed i bought a lot of their stuff lately and closing out the new one Wake the Sleeping Dragon. Um, a friend of mine who is involved in that scene hit me up on Instagram when I was talking about one of their older records and was like, you got to hear the new record when it comes out. Preview that that first track. The, uh, the first song, Inner Vision, was up on streaming for quite a while before the album dropped. And uh, it blew me away because it was very, very fucking fast punk almost kind of discharge for the first half into this great kind of rollicking catchy chorus and they really mix it up on this all the songs kind of have their own great separate identity there's not a lot of bleed the second song that crazy white boy shit is a a nod to the bad brains where they kind of take little nuances from that bad brains were known for um this tendency the bad brains had on a couple songs to go who uh, <laughs> they throw that in there. Um, all the lyrics are kind of a, a love letter to the bad brains and stuff, which is really cool. Uh, the song Bull's Anthem is almost, almost sounds like a Cox bar or song or something like that. Like a, like a pub chant kind of deal. Um, Deep States, a fucking great song. Hardcore Horseshoe. There's a lot of very early sick of it all on this. Like the first couple of records produced very well. L Lou's vocals are in the foreground. Um, very abrasive, fucking tearing at you. Uh, it just, uh, it, for me, it's a 10 out of a 10 as far as one of the hardcore records this year. If I bother doing an album of the year video, which I probably will, it's definitely going to be on there for one of my favorite hardcore releases, along with the Mind Force. <sighs> that Mind Force, man, get into it. So, big fucking mess. Uh, my recording stuff is... Who knows? I've noticed that a few, a little bit of lag, and when that happens, I have to start all over. So we'll see if this even makes makes it off the cutting room floor. But I wanted to record something um, right after I woke up because I thought, you know, self torture is fun. Uh, I gotta go to work. 
Everybody have a good day. See you this weekend.